Good day everyone, Jeffrey Turner here, becoming an actor day 33.5, because I messed up earlier, and I'm a one take kind of guy, but what I did, of course I said, I said I would do, and I did what I said, was I started working on my character, and this is for Misery, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Misery is a Stephen King adaptation movie of his, uh, his novel where a author is held, held captive by a crazed fan. So I only have seven lines and one gut-wrenching scream in this scene, but really how I want to play it is, and of course I have to work with my director on how to do the scene, make it entertaining, but I want it to be that he's upset, that he is being held captive, and that he's a, really just a bitter person. And he doesn't really like what he does because he's been doing it for the same 10 years, the same character for 10 years. But basically what it's going to be is that he is confused and then frustrated, then angry, and then injured. Basically that's how it's going to go. And then these are my notes for, for that particular character. Then for my second scene study, which is uh, Blade Runner... And for those of you who are unfamiliar, it takes place in a dystopian society where clones are running loose and there are people sent to collect them. So my character Deckard is one of those collectors and he's with a woman who he's been sent to collect by his client. His client's daughter has been cloned and of course all of her memories are present, but this is the grown-up version of that daughter and she doesn't realize that she's a clone. She knows that she has memories, but she doesn't know if they're real because she's now under the impression that she's a replicant. She didn't know. But basically, the Deckard in this scene that I want to play is, is um, distant, and he sees a lot of his ex-wife in the character, Rachel, that he's been saved by. So that's a conflicting emotion. He's been saved by the wife who left him. And he's a bit of a scumbag in that he is so sure and confident in his decisions that he knows for a fact he's never killed a human when he meant to kill a replicant. He knows that he's not a replicant, even though you can't really be sure because that's the, that's the whole point is that you don't realize that you're a clone because you have all these memories programmed into you. But basically how it goes is that I'm going to be taking my shirt off, offering drinks, and then uh, doing some sensual romantic kissing on body parts. But I'm going to have to make it entertaining again. With these scenes, I've had to think about how I would approach them in a creative environment sense. In that we're not actually going to be uh, in a cabin in the woods or we're not going to be in an apartment in a high rise in the future. So I already have an idea of how I can surrender to the environment, surrender to the audience to make the scene interesting and entertaining. And I have the layout in my head of where the blocking is going to go, where the environment stuff is set up so that I can interact with it. And I made notes on both of my scenes and what I would need. For example, Misery, I'll need a penguin a bobby pin, a 4x4 four four piece of wood, and a sledgehammer along with a knife. And all those are going to be the props in the scene. And then for the Blade Runner scene, it's going to be two cups, one bottle, one ice pack. The freezer is going to be probably just a shelf. And then two pictures that we can handle because she asks about the people in the pictures from the frames that she picks up. And I have to describe that one's my father, then he's dead. And then I kind of thought about how I would how I'd be saying that as well. And then the other one is his wife, who left him. And like I said, he sees his wife in Rachel, the other character. So I got I got an idea of how it's going to go. And then of course on Saturday I'm going to be going over all this. Wednesday I'm going to be going over the misery scene. And it's going to be it's going to be pretty fun. I think I'm going to be able to get this down in a sense where it's going to be believable 
and I need to work on my line delivery so that it doesn't sound like I'm reading lines. But it's going to be a lot easier when I say it out loud when I have that other person who I'm going to be acting off of, and they're going to be acting off of me. So getting through all that, I'm basically done with the day. I could still be working on my monologue, but unfortunately I wasn't able to schedule that this week due to a problem with the scheduling system. But it's been cleared up, and next week is going to be perfect. I still have three workshops this week and two scene studies. So five acting class participation type things. And then once I'm done with these two scene studies, I'll have two more scene studies lined up uh, with my production group, Michael and Luai. So uh, I, I felt like maybe since I lost my way these last couple of days that I, I do need to continue with the slowing down process and, and focus more on my current projects because not only do I have these two scene studies I'm going to be performing in front of the class, but also the other project that our, our group is working on, I have to be on top of that as well. So that's basically what happened today. I appreciate you guys watching and, and keeping up with me. And, uh, I mean, geez, just have a wonderful life already.